video games, then comics, now apps can become movies? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Angry Birds. Hurry! Something's coming! Greetings! I am a pig. What's a pig? Show them how we do it. How you doing? Is that what I think it is? Excuse me. Those are fragile, right? Not yours. You are making our guests feel unwelcome. And you're not asking basic questions. Well, this just got awkward. Doesn't anyone see what's going on here? <laughs> the whole world is in danger. And it's up to us to stop them. Fire! <laughs> Real Giblets! Oh my god. Well, to be fair, Angry Birds is no ordinary app. Launched in 2009, it not only became one of the top apps of all time, with over 3 billion downloads, but the only one to evolve beyond your smartphone. There are Angry Birds animated TV series, comic books, toys, and even theme parks. So why not a movie? In fact, Sony Pictures Animation feels so good about their chances with Angry Birds that they've got an emoji movie set for next summer. And while the makers of Angry Birds, Rovio, have their headquarters in Finland, their movie is decidedly American, with pee jokes and everything. Hey, it worked for Danish toy giant Lego, who trusted 21 Jump Street's Phil Lord and Chris Miller with their brand. Although, the Lego movie also had a pretty strong message about the true purpose of play and the importance of experimentation. Will the Angry Birds movie be that deep? It does deal with anger management, right? Rovio is very much Sony's partner on this venture, as in they're investing a serious amount of capital in the film, which they can certainly afford as their success with Angry Birds, and pretty much only Angry Birds, has made them cash rich. Or has it? There have been a number of layoffs at Rovio lately, and top executive turnover, as the company struggles to deal with what could be the waning popularity of their only product. For instance, in 2014, the company suffered a 73% drop in profits, which would make anyone angry. And to their credit, Rovio is trying to create a new hit game, but nothing has caught on like Angry Birds has, or did. So obviously there's a lot riding on this movie, which is the finest that Angry Birds money can buy. Former Marvel Studios producer David Mizell, the discount Kevin Feige, is heading up Rovio's new film division. They dream big there. While a cavalcade of comedy stars will bring the Angry Birds to life on the silver screen. Josh Gad, Peter Dinklage, Bill Hader, Kate McKinnon, Keegan-Michael Key, Jason Sudeikis, Danny McBride, and Sean Penn. Wow! Angry Birds don't play. They even purchased a Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade balloon. And so far, so good, as the trailer for the film has performed very well online, and Disney's mega-hit Zootopia is just finally running out of steam. However, with Alice Through the Looking Glass, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, and Finding Dory fast approaching, we'll have to see if Red and Company can take out those formidable Hollywood pigs at the box office. You know when that mime bird goes, oh my god? Well, the first time I heard it in the movie, I was like, I think that might be a vaguely homophobic joke. But then the more they did it, the more it kind of wore me down, and I started to like chuckle to myself, ashamed, ashamedly. <laughs> and then after having seen the film, every time something like crazy happens, I like reflexively go in internally, oh my god. And that's kind of like how I would describe this movie. Like, it definitely crosses the line a number of times, and it's kind of vaguely inappropriate, and you're a little ashamed for liking it. In fact, I can't even say for sure if I do like this movie, but I'll be darned if I don't kind of want to see it again. Yes, it really sticks with you. Uh, now, in, in addition to its vulgarity and uh, perhaps inappropriateness, you know, in terms of like what you can say or not say. Although these days people are like, ah, oh, PC-ness is for, for the birds. So uh, maybe some people will really gravitate towards this movie. But at the beginning, what also kept me from kind of getting into it was that whatever they were doing to justify Red having to go to anger management kind of angered the audience too, right? Like I was like, that is annoying. And like, it wasn't fun to watch. You were like, I do want to beat the crap out of that other bird. But when he finally did get to anger management and uh, Josh Gad's Chuck showed up, 
well, then the movie started to get uh, pretty darn good. That's where it started to really pick up. So if you're watching Angry Birds and you too were frustrated at the beginning of the movie, uh, well, thankfully the beautiful animation will distract you uh, until it gets good. Uh, just know that it will get good. And you know, everybody likes Josh Gad's Olaf. You know, I wasn't a big fan of Frozen, but I've certainly, uh, you know, witnessed the fandom for particularly his character. Uh, but I finally got Josh Gad watching this movie. I was like, ah, I see. And he was just such a shot in the arm to the Angry Birds movie that I think he really does prove himself an MVP when it comes to voiceover work. He's still a little grating to me in live action, but if he can do as good a job in the Beauty and the Beast movie as LeFou as he does here, uh, that movie might be off to a very good start. <laughs> I even forgive him, and I guess the movie, because it's really the movie's fault, but he should have kind of like said something about it. But I was, I, I forgive the movie, even though I thought it was horrible that they ripped off, like, directly ripped off. It wasn't even like an homage. It was a total ripoff of the Quicksilver scene from X-Men Days of Future Past. That, I thought, was another one of the moments in the movie where you were just like, you shouldn't have done that. And, and But that I kind of never got over. But I forgive uh, Josh Gad because his character was so fantastic. The other voiceover uh, character I liked the most actually was Keegan-Michael Key as Judge Peckinpah. And he had did such a good job with his character and created such an interesting voice that I didn't even know it was Keegan-Michael Key. Also, Sean Penn is the big angry bird who never talks. So uh, that's a real uh, bait and switch right there. Uh, now, back to the vulgarity. I'm not sure if this is an appropriate movie for little kids. Now, the vulgar jokes, uh, they go pretty fast, right? So they might go over the, uh, you know, the heads of the kids in the audience. However, some might not, some might stick. Some kid might be like, what was that about? And then it'll just be rattling around in there. So if you're at all concerned about what your uh, child watches, you might want to go and see this movie first. You know, you might be like, do I really want to see the Angry Birds twice? But I told you, I kind of want to see it again. So maybe uh, you might find yourself uh, not minding having to watch it twice either. Uh, I would say that if, you know, it's adventures I'd say into South Park territory sometimes. Not, never, never is like, far as South Park goes, but like, let's, I would say South Park light. Now the animation is so spectacular. I was just blown away. I think this might be some of the best detail work I've ever seen in animation. I was really impressed. I particularly liked Red's house. I was like, that is a nice house. I would actually like to go to that house. In fact, I would like to go to their whole Bird Island. And I can see why there's a theme park. All of that picture that we had in the opening uh, did not look as good as this movie does. So if the Angry Birds movie does very well, I can see maybe not uh, an independent Angry Birds land, but I think that Universal would be perhaps wise to, to pick it up. I don't know how popular Seuss Landing is. Seuss is, well, I guess Seuss is going to get a shot in the arm when Illumination Entertainment starts making more Seuss movies. Uh, but this wouldn't be a, a bad place to visit either. I liked Piggy Island as well. And the actual action sequence that takes place there where they finally like recreate the app, you know, the game that everybody plays and why everybody likes Angry Birds in the first place. Well, that was surprisingly unforced. I was like, oh wow, this actually kind of works and it doesn't seem like you just stuffed it into the movie because you have to. As for some of the other characters, Peter Dinklage was okay, Bill Hader was fine, uh, but they didn't really push themselves outside of their, their usual voiceover work. But, uh, so, they, so they just they didn't, couldn't quite stand out. As for the movie as a whole, it is one weird, beautiful movie. Uh, and I'm not even quite sure if it has a message. Like on the one hand, they seem to be pointing out the importance of being a part of the group, but also in maintaining your individuality and still like being a bit of an outsider so you can be a leader. I mean, I think there's no clear takeaway from the movie. And I don't even think right at the end of the movie like is in an awesome spot, right? I don't think, I think he still kind of needs to go to those anger management classes long term. Uh, but the movie does have some nice moments, some nice teachable moments. And also, by the way, a weird fascination with parenting for a child's movie, right? Like, uh, I guess because it ended up tying into the plot, but you know, with romance and having kids, I was just like, what a weird thing to put in a child's movie. I don't think a child would, would be really interested in that. And also, I don't know if kids would get as frustrated about some of the things that they, they touch upon at the beginning of the movie. So it's a real grab bag. Uh, finally, though, as far as 3D or 2D, the press screening was in 2D. So if the stu if Sony, the studio, doesn't even think that it's worth watching in 3D for press, um, I can't really, you know, say that you should go and pay to see it in 3D. And I enjoyed it in 2D, so I think that would be that would be fine. But if you're like 3D, I guess, you know, I 
guess you could pay for it. Uh, but for instance, Zootopia was also shown in 2D for its press screening from Disney. And I have to say, I saw it in 3D in the theater afterwards when I went on my own, uh, and I didn't think it was worth it there either. So enjoy Angry Birds in 2D. And I'd be very curious to hear your reactions to the film as well, because it's out there. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to continuing the conversation down below, and you can check out some other episodes right now. Thank you.